Number 10, Rochelle Lefebvre. One of the biggest villains of the Twilight Saga was replaced partway through the franchise. Victoria Sutherland, who spends most of the first two movies hunting Bella Swan, was originally played by Canadian actress Rochelle Lefebvre. But by the third movie, Eclipse, in 2010, fans noticed that Victoria was being played by an entirely different actress, Bryce Dallas Howard. It turns out that there was a lot of drama behind the decision, as Rochelle herself was shocked when she was fired. She told Entertainment Weekly in 2009, quote, I was stunned by Summit's decision to recast the role of Victoria for Eclipse. I was fully committed to the Twilight Saga and to the portrayal of Victoria. I turned down several other film opportunities and, in accordance with my contractual rights, accepted only roles that would involve very short shooting schedules. She went on to say that Summit dropped her because of a 10-day overlap where she had a scheduling conflict. But the studio was quick to deny this on their part and came out saying, that the actress decided not to tell them about her other work commitments until the very last moment. Although it would have been great to see Rochelle as Victoria for the last film, many fans agree that Bryce certainly gave it her all. Number 9, Terrence Howard. The first Iron Man film really ushered in the age of Marvel and paved the way for many iconic superhero movies to come. The 2008 movie launched Robert Downey Jr. into superstar status for playing Tony Stark along with his co-star Terrence Howard who played Rhodey. But the massive success of the franchise paid off for everyone except Howard, who insisted that he got screwed over after the first movie took off, claiming producers wanted him to take a massive pay cut for the sequel because they believed it would be successful with or without him. Unfortunately, they were right and Don Cheadle was recast as Tony Stark's right-hand man ever since. It's safe to say that Howard was not happy at all and took it out on Robert Downey Jr. on Watch What Happens Live. Quote, it turns out that the person I helped become Iron Man when it was time Time to re-up for the second time, he took the money that was supposed to go to me and pushed me out. He went on to say that when the studio approached him for the second movie, they told him, look, we will pay you one eighth of what we contractually had for you because we think the second one will be successful with or without you. That was when Howard called Robert Downey Jr. only to be practically ghosted. That was pretty shady, but MCU fans seemed totally fine with the swap as it was clear that Don Cheadle brought a lot to the character. Number eight, Ryan Gosling. It's really hard to imagine that the actor got fired from a film set and replaced two days before production started, but that is exactly what happened. Ryan Gosling was set to star in Peter Jackson's film adaptation of The Lovely Bones as Susie's father alongside Saoirse Ronan and Stanley Tucci. It was a very heavy role because his character's daughter is brutally murdered in the beginning of the film, and he has to overcome his immense grief to try and find the perpetrator. So naturally, Gosling believed that his character, Jack Salmon, should have a certain appearance to convey his level of grief and decided to gain weight for the role. But it turns out the filmmakers weren't happy when he put on 60 pounds. He explained his vision in an interview with The Hollywood Reporter. Quote, we had a different idea of how the character should look. I really believed he should be 210 pounds. He even went as far as drinking melted haagen ice cream to prepare for the role and was completely dedicated to nailing the part. In the end, when Gosling showed up on set, he was pretty much dropped from the film and replaced two days before production by none other than Mark Wahlberg. Number 7, Crispin Glover. The actor was cast as George McFly, the father of Back to the Future's main character Marty. Following the blockbuster's popularity, plans for the sequel were already being put in motion, and the previous cast was getting called back. But from the very beginning of salary negotiations, Glover was unable to reach an agreement with the producers. Essentially, he asked for too much money to be involved in the script, and when the studio refused his request, the script was restructured in order to keep the character on screen as little as possible, and he was replaced by actor Jeffrey Wiseman, who actually had to wear makeup to resemble Glover. Not only that, but the filmmakers used stills of him from the first movie and did everything they could to get the original actor's image in there, so without his permission they essentially used his likeness, which led the actor to file a lawsuit claiming that they had used his image without his consent, and he still criticizes their decision to this day. Quote, they stole something from me, and it's illegal to steal something. It's really that simple. Bob Gale is quite literally a thief, no exaggeration. So it's clear that Glover still carries a lot of that frustration with him, even now. Number 6, Megan Fox. Her role in the first two films of the live action Transformers franchise helped catapult her to a new level of stardom, but she didn't get to stick around for the whole series. The third Transformers film from Michael Bay proved to be a milestone for the franchise and went on to earn more than $1 billion at the box office. And sadly, Megan wasn't a part of it. Her 
character Michaela was written out and she was instead replaced by Rosie Huntington Whiteley as Sam's new love interest Carly. It turns out that Megan was fired from Transformers Dark of the Moon during production after she compared Michael Bay to Hitler and called him a nightmare to work with in an interview with Wonderland. From that point on there were conflicting reports over whose decision it was and why it was made. But it wasn't until 2011 that Bay confessed that it was actually Steven Spielberg who told him to fire her after she made those controversial comments. In fact, after she was fired from Dark of the Moon, Megan stopped appearing in bigger movies altogether, but has since repaired her relationship with Bay and even went on to star in two of his Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movies. Number five, Samantha Morton. She was originally cast in the voice only role of Samantha, an operation system that falls in love with the lonely divorced man played by Joaquin Phoenix. In the 2013 movie, Her. Although the plot itself may sound a little bit crazy, the film sells the central romance beautifully and was very well received by critics, earning a huge 94% on Rotten Tomatoes. Samantha Morton was not only confirmed for the part, but she actually completed all of her characters filming for the movie, only to ultimately lose the role to Scarlett Johansson. So what went wrong? Well, the director Spike Jones said, quote, Samantha was with us on set and was amazing. It was only in post-production when we started editing that we realized what the movie needed was different from what Samantha and I had created together. So we recast. Which is kind of sad, but Morton took it all in stride. The British actress told Vanity Fair, if you listen to my voice and you listen to Scarlett's voice, they're just completely different flowers. And while she was disappointed not to attend the film's premiere, she confirmed that there was no bad feelings whatsoever and was actually thrilled that the project did so well. Number four, Johnny Depp. The Pirates of the Caribbean actor played the villain in two of the previous Fantastic Beasts movies, but Johnny Depp was actually fired from the third installment of the franchise, The Secrets of Dumbledore, and replaced by Danish actor Mads Mikkelsen. So what happened? Well, in November of 2020, Depp revealed via social media that Warner Brothers had asked him to exit the franchise after filming only one scene. The reason being is that his legal battle with his ex-wife Amber Heard had gone viral and he had just lost his libel case against the Sun after the publication called him a wife beater. In general, 2020 was a terrible year for Depp as the public really started to turn against him and the studio felt it would greatly affect their sales to keep him in the film. So the role of Gellert Grindelwald was henceforth played by Casino Royale star Mickelson. The funny thing is that Depp still walked away with his $16 million salary thanks to a pay or play contract. So Warner Brothers was stuck footing the bill either way and the studio's decision to cut him out of the movie didn't even pay off, considering that the third film ended up performing even worse at the box office than the first two. Number three, Stuart Townsend. Back in 2000, the Irish actor was a rising star with the kind of buzz that comes from having raw talent and a relationship with Charlize Theron. So it made sense that Stuart Townsend would land a breakout role in one of the most acclaimed and successful movie trilogies of all time, Lord of the Rings. At 27 years old, Townsend nabbed the part of Aragorn, the future king of Gondor and went through months of rigorous training just to be fired one day before filming was due to commence. It was director Peter Jackson who quickly decided that the actor was far too young to pull off the character and Townsend was replaced by Viggo Mortensen who is 14 years his senior. Now the Lord of the Rings trilogy itself was always a monumental undertaking and a huge gamble for Jackson so with all the moving parts to consider the decision obviously paid off in the end as the film might not have been so successful if one of the key roles hadn't been replaced. But of course, it would have been a major setback for Townsend, considering how much he put into what would have been the role of a lifetime for him, especially considering that he hasn't been able to obtain such a big part in a franchise since. Number two, James Remar. Director James Cameron's movie Aliens originally cast James Remar as Hicks, but the sequel replaced the troubled star all because of his onset behavior. When Aliens began production, James had the role of Corporal Hicks and had a darker take on the role. However, several unfortunate incidents resulted in the actor eventually being replaced by Michael Bain after about a month or so of filming. The reason being is that James was reportedly very difficult on set, including a time when he allegedly brought live ammunition on set and blew a hole in a neighboring set that was for the Little Shop of Horrors. But the decision to remove James was final after he was busted for possession. Unfortunately for the filmmakers, some of Hicks' scenes had already been shot, resulting in reshoots and clever editing to insert Michael as a replacement take on the role. Yet this was all kept a secret for years from fans and the crew of Aliens, as all they knew was that James was simply gone one day without explanation, with Michael standing
standing in his place. And coming in at number one, Eric Stoltz. Right from the beginning, the filmmakers behind Back to the Future wanted to cast Michael J. Fox in the lead role of Marty McFly. The only problem was that Michael was tied up with shooting his hit TV show, Family Ties, which was a massive scheduling conflict. So they went with Eric Stoltz instead. It would have been a life changing role for the youngster, but according to IndieWire, director Robert Zemeckis and producer Steven Spielberg realized weeks into production that Eric wasn't getting many laughs in the rough cuts of the film. So in a series of really awkward maneuvers, they came up with a plan to fire him and bring in their original choice in order to save the film. But according to the 2015 book, We Don't Need Roads, the making of the Back to the Future trilogy, it explains that Eric also had some pretty demanding onset behavior and allegedly required everyone on set to refer to him as Marty. In fact, the book alleges that by the time he was fired, some of the cast and crew members actually seemed relieved. Whatever the case, recasting Eric ultimately proved to be a really good business decision, considering that the film went on to gross over $200 million. Coming in at 10, Gwyneth Paltrow, Titanic. A few years back, Gwyneth Paltrow gave a very open and honest interview with Howard Stern, detailing some of the big Hollywood roles she was offered but refused to accept. Not only did she turn down Heather Graham's role in Boogie Nights, but she also went on to turn down the lead role in James Cameron's 1997 epic, Titanic. As we know, the honor went to Kate Winslet, who did a stellar job playing Rose DeWitt for Carter, the wealthy socialite and love interest of Leonardo DiCaprio. Of course, as we know, the film to this day is still one of the highest grossing movies of all time. Paltrow stated to Howard Stern, I quote, My mother will kill me that I'm talking about turning down movie roles. She says it's not ladylike. In an attempt to avoid the topic, she successfully steered the conversation away from her mistakes by stating that she can't change the past and her choices orchestrated something far greater. Preach Gwyneth, but still, you done goofed. Coming in at 9, Christina Applegate, Legally Blonde. Earlier this month, Christina Applegate appeared on Watch What Happens Live with her Dead to Me co-star Linda Cardellini, where she was asked if she had any regrets about turning down roles in the past, particularly the roles that shot Reese Witherspoon into stardom, aka Elle Woods in Legally Blonde. The actress stated, I quote, The story's been out there, but I wasn't like actually offered Legally Blonde. The script came to me, but at the time I had just gotten off of Married with Children and I felt like it was too close to what I had just been doing. So no, I don't regret it because Reese did a much better job than I ever could, and she now has way more money than I do and way more success. And so why would I even regret that? Well, at least she has a sense of humor about it. Linda Cardellini also chimed in by stating, But you could have worked with me. As Cardellini of course played Chutney Windham in the 2001 comedy. Applicate responded with, if I would have just been like, boo. <laughs> we all would have been like, boo. In at 8, Sarah Michelle Gellar, Clueless. Have you ever wondered how drastically different Clueless could have been without Alicia Silverstone playing the iconic role of Cher? No? Well now you can wonder. As we know, Sarah Michelle Gellar made history on Buffy the Vampire Slayer, catapulting her into superstardom. However, her career could have turned out very differently if she hadn't turned down one major iconic role. The Vampire Slayer was offered the role of Cher Horowitz in Clueless before Buffy even existed, but she turned down the role, which of course went to Alicia Silverstone. I'm sure she has some regrets considering the movie was a smash hit, setting the bar high for all 90s high school movies that followed. Coming in at 7, John Travolta, Forrest Gump. Forrest Gump has a place in all of our hearts, a slow witted but kind man bumbling his way through life while embarking on some truly wild adventures. What's not to love? However, like our last number, can you possibly imagine what Forrest Gump would have been like if Tom Hanks didn't take on the role? Well, now you can because it very nearly went to John Travolta. Travolta was actually offered the role before Hanks even came along, however, he turned it down to appear in Quentin Tarantino's classic Pulp Fiction. Now, of course, Forrest Gump went on to dominate the 67th Academy Awards, which I'm sure left a sour taste in Travolta's mouth, with him ultimately stating that he regretted turning down the role of Gump. However, would the film have worked with Travolta at its helm? That's the question. What do you guys think? Coming in at 6, Jennifer Lawrence, Hateful Eight. Now, it's common knowledge that Quentin Tarantino often writes his characters with a particular actor in mind, hence why a lot of the same actors pop up repeatedly throughout his films. It's very rare that when Tarantino writes a role for someone, that they turn it down. However, that was the case for Jennifer Lawrence, who was offered a role in The Hateful Eight but ultimately turned it down. Regarding the situation, the director stated, I quote, She was just doing me a courtesy to see me, I think. She was doing joy. She had to do all the publicity on the Hunger Games movies. There was no f 
fucking way in the world that she was available. Having said that, I'm glad I didn't cast somebody that young. I think I absolutely positively made the right choice as far as the ages of the characters. The role of Daisy Domague ultimately went to Jennifer Jason Lee, who was 25 years Lawrence's senior, so it was probably for the best that Jennifer wasn't interested. What do you guys think there? Coming in at 5, Sean Connery, Lord of the Rings. Gandalf has become an iconic character in cinema, with Ian McKellen doing a stellar job taking on the role of the powerful wizard. However, he wasn't Peter Jackson's first choice. The role was originally offered to James Bond star Sean Connery, who ultimately turned it down, losing out on nearly $450 million. To add insult to injury, Connery was offered a 15% stake in the film franchise's box office profits if he accepted the role, meaning the actor lost out on a potential multi million payday. According to sources, Connery turned down the role because he didn't understand the part. I quote, Even a veteran star like Sean can make a mistake so big that it ultimately causes him to lose out on a mind blowing amount of money. Sean Connery has refused to comment on his refusal of the part, but has previously stated, I read the book, I read the script, I saw the movie, I still don't understand it. Ian McKellen, I believe, is marvelous in it. Sean, seriously, what's not to understand? You're playing a fing wizard. Coming in at four, Emma Watson, La La Land. Did you know both Emma Stone and Ryan Gosling were not the first choices to star in the Oscar nominated musical La La Land? Former Harry Potter star Emma Watson was originally set to appear in the film alongside Miles Teller. However, Watson, while speaking with ITV's Lorraine, stated that she pulled out of the film due to scheduling conflicts with Beauty and the Beast. I quote, With a movie like Beauty and the Beast, it's like three months prep. It's like three or four months shooting. It's in the UK. I had to be there to do that and as I was saying before, you can't half ass a project like this. You're in or you're out. And I was like, I've kind of got to be all in. And so this was really where my heart was and I knew I had to fully commit and make sure that I did this. Now of course, Beauty and the Beast did fantastic at the box office, however, you can't help but think Watson must be a little bitter that Emma Stone went on to win Best Actress at the Oscars for a role that she could have played. Coming in at 3, Will Smith, The Matrix. In February of this year, Will Smith uploaded a video to his YouTube channel titled, Why I Turned Down The Matrix, in which he told fans, I quote, Alright, this is one of them stories I'm not proud of, but it's the truth. I did turn down Neo in The Matrix. Back in 1998, Smith was coming off the success of Men in Black and was in high demand in Hollywood. The Matrix writer and directors approached Smith and pitched him the film. I quote, They came in and it was like they'd only done one movie, I think it was called Bound, and they came in and they made a pitch for The Matrix. As it turns out, they're geniuses, but there's a fine line between genius and what I experienced in the meeting. So yeah, you're probably wondering what exactly went down in that pitch meeting. Well don't worry, Will Smith explained that too. According to Smith, they pitched the film as, I quote, so dude, we're thinking like, imagine you're in a fight and then you like, jump. Imagine if you could stop jumping in the middle of the jump, but then people could see around you. That was the pitch. I probably would have turned down that role too. Coming in at 2, Hugh Jackman, James Bond. Way back when the Bond franchise was searching for a new 007 to replace Piers Brosnan, Daniel Craig was surprisingly not the first choice. At the time, Hugh Jackman was playing Wolverine in 2000's X-Men and was becoming one of the biggest names in Hollywood. So he was of course among the actors being considered for the role of Bond, however he ultimately turned it down. I quote, I was about to do X-Men 2 when a call came from my agent asking if I'd be interested in Bond. I just felt at the time that the scripts had become so unbelievable and crazy, and I felt like they needed to become grittier and real. Not only were the scripts a problem for Jackman, he also wanted the time to take on other roles too, stating, I was worried that between Bond and X-Men I'd never have time to do different things. I always try to do different things, but there was a time between X-Men 3 and the first Wolverine movie when I could see the roles getting smaller. People wanted me to play that kind of hero part exclusively. Felt a little bit claustrophobic. Now it's probably for the best, with Jackman going on to land roles in The Prestige, The Fountain, Les Miserables, and The Greatest Showman. My favourite. And finally, coming in at number one, Matt Damon, Brad Pitt, Leonardo DiCaprio, Brokeback Mountain. Now I'm slightly cheating with this number by listing three actors, but it was for the same movie, so cut me some slack. I'm the host, I can do what I want. As we know, Brokeback Mountain won three Oscars in 2006, with its two young stars, Heath Ledger and Jake Gyllenhaal, also receiving nominations. However, before Ang Lee took on the role of director, Gus Van Sant had the job, and struggled to pull the film together. Van Sant told IndieWire that the project stalled because he couldn't cast the major A-list actors that he wanted, such as Brad Pitt, Leo, and Matt Damon. I quote, Nobody wanted to do it. I was working on it and I felt like I needed a really strong cast, like a famous cast. That wasn't working out. I asked the usual suspects. They all said no. Now it's no surprise, because even at the time, starring in a gay love story was a scary move for some big name actors. But thankfully, Heath Ledger and Gyllenhaal stepped up, with the two doing an incredible job 
job portraying the closeted cowboys. Coming in at 10, Brian Cranston, Sebastian Shaw. Yep, that's right. Once upon a time, Breaking Bad star Brian Cranston was almost the world's most evil mutant. The Emmy winning actor was on the set of Total Recall when he admitted that he was briefly up for the part of Sebastian Shaw in X Men First Class, the role that eventually went to Kevin Bacon. Now, what turned the actor away from Marvel, you may ask? Drive. Yep. According to Cranston, he had the choice to play Shaw or a supporting character in the Ryan Gosling thriller movie. And of course, he chose the latter due to its irresistible script. I quote, At the same time I read Drive and I thought, oh this is what I'd rather do. I turned down X-Men for the role in Drive because I liked the character better. Much better. The experience with Ryan Gosling and Albert Brooks and Ron Perlman and Carrie Mulligan. It was terrific. Coming in at 9, Dougree Scott. Wolverine. It's been 19 years since Hugh Jackman first appeared on our cinema screens as the formidable Wolverine. And at this point, we can't quite imagine any other actor taking on the role. However, Jackman wasn't actually the first choice for the original X Men film, which may shock some of you. While speaking to the Aussies in Hollywood podcast, Jackman revealed that he got the role after Scottish actor Dougree Scott withdrew due to scheduling conflicts with Mission Impossible 2. Don't feel too bad for Scott though, when walking on a red carpet a few years ago, he admitted he turned down the role because he didn't want to do it. However, I'm not too sure I believe that. In at 8, Sam Rockwell, Iron Man. Much like our previous number, Tony Stark has become an iconic character in cinema, and imagining anyone taking on the role of Iron Man that isn't Robert Downey Jr. is quite the challenging ask. However, it turned out that another actor nearly took his place from the very beginning of development. Early on, John Favreau had expressed interest in giving the role of Tony Stark to Sam Rockwell. Favreau approached the actor about potentially doing a screen test as the title character. However, it didn't pan out, and Robert Downey Jr. eventually beat out Rockwell. There were no hard feelings though because Sam Rockwell later returned to Marvel two years later, portraying the smarmy industrialist Justin Hammer in Iron Man 2. Coming in at 7, Quentin Rampage Jackson. John Ray. If you're unfamiliar with Quentin Rampage Jackson, he is known as one of the world's best MMA fighters of all time. But like a handful of athletes, he also tried his hand at acting. Some successful, others not so much. His most prominent role is playing B.A. Baracus in the A Team. However, that wasn't the only major Hollywood blockbuster he could have starred in. Almost 10 years ago now, he had the opportunity to play John Wraith in X Men Origins Wolverine. Jackson revealed that he passed on the role to focus on his MMA career. With Marvel eventually turning to rapper Will I Am, who took on the role of John Ray. Coming in at 6, Mel Gibson, Odin. Actor and director Mel Gibson has had many ups and downs in the industry, particularly downs, with the actor being on the outs with a lot of big time Hollywood execs. However, Gibson was very close to landing the role of Thor's father, Odin, in the MCU. In an interview with the actor, he was asked if he had ever been approached for a superhero film. I quote, Yeah, long time ago, to play Thor's dad. However, Gibson wasn't a fan and turned down the role, which was eventually given to Anthony Hopkins. I think we're all pretty happy about that. In at 5, Olivia Munn, Vanessa Carlisle. I'm sure there are many people out there who would love to be Deadpool's girlfriend, even play Deadpool's girlfriend. However, Olivia Munn is not one of those people. The newsroom actress who went on to play Psylocke in X-Men Apocalypse told news outlets that the original role she was offered was a far cry from the sword-wielding badass. According to reports, she was set to play Vanessa in Deadpool, but was unsatisfied with the character's depth and limited action. Preach. Coming in at 4, Alexander Skarsgård, Thor. 10 long years Years ago, when Thor was in development and attempting to cast the role of God of Thunder, Hollywood heartthrob Alexander Skarsgård came very close to nabbing the prize. Skarsgård stated, I quote, Yeah, I met with Marvel Studios chief Kevin Feige a few times and the director Kenneth Branagh. According to reports, the casting process got so far along that the actor even filmed an audition in the complete Thor costume, hammer and all. However, as we know, he ultimately lost the role to Chris Hemsworth, but Skarsgård has said that he has an open mind about one day landing another comic book based role. Fingers crossed. Coming in at 3, Jensen Ackles, Hawkeye. Did you know star of CW Supernatural Jensen Ackles once auditioned for the role of Captain America, but more famously, Hawkeye. After missing out on the role of Cap, Marvel apparently took a liking to Ackles and offered him the role of Hawkeye instead. However, Ackles was very quick to turn it down due to scheduling conflicts with Supernatural, the show that never seemed to end. Thank god it's over now. Now, no one is quite sure whether Ackles was truthful about him turning down the role, considering he did audition for the role of Cap, and if his schedule was catering to that, then surely he would have been 
able to take on the role of Hawkeye as well. Just saying. Someone's a little bitter. Coming in at 2, Olivia Wilde, Gamora. A long time ago, Olivia Wilde was asked about superhero movies and the possibility of making Captain Marvel with her Meadowland director, Reed Morano. She was open to the possibility and discussed how Marvel has been incredibly smart regarding their casting choices, even that of Gamora, a role which she was close to nabbing. However, Wilde turned down the role for unknown reasons, which led to Zoe Saldana taking on the role. And finally, coming in at number one, Matt Damon, Daredevil. A few years back, veteran actor Matt Damon told reporters that he had turned down the role his childhood friend Ben Affleck went on to play in Daredevil. He discussed how, as children, the comic they always read was Daredevil. I quote, For us, it was always Daredevil. That's the comic we read when we were kids. But when that one came along, I chickened out because I couldn't tell. I hadn't seen the director's work and I didn't know, so I just said no. Following his refusal of the role, his best friend Ben Affleck told him that he had to do it, so he took it. The film did okay, but ultimately bombed in the eyes of fans and critics alike. However, Ben was ultimately very proud of it, and I guess that's all that matters, but I can't help but think that Damon dodged a massive bullet there. Starting us off at number 10, Gwyneth Paltrow. The 1997 film Titanic was a box office hit. It made over $2 billion at the box office and won a butt ton of awards as well. It's a classic film, and I'm pretty sure that everyone and their mother has seen it. Kate Winslet, who played Rose in the film, was nominated for an Academy Award for her role, and it brought her a lot of success. But Kate wasn't the top pick for the film's cast in the beginning. Turns out the studio had offered Gwyneth Paltrow the coveted role, and she actually turned it down. She was one of the last two actresses considered for the part, and she turned it down, leaving it to Kate. Even though she was successful in later movies like Shakespeare in Love in 99, for which she won an Academy Award, she could have had a very different career path had she taken the role in Titanic. Even Gwyneth's mom doesn't like it when she talks about losing the role. Maybe she's just devastated that her daughter didn't get the chance to snub Jack from the obvious extra space on the door. So much space on the door. She was just selfish. At number nine, Josh Hutcherson. I'm sure we are all familiar with Andrew Garfield's role as Peter Parker in the Amazing Spider-Man films, but Andrew wasn't the only strong contender for the role. Josh Hutcherson was also being considered for the role, but obviously it went to Andrew in the end. Josh was so close to getting the part that he even made a demo reel for the role, and he made a pretty good Spider-Man in my opinion. Even though he didn't get the part in the Amazing Spider-Man the first time, he was considered again for the role as Peter Parker in the MCU. Spider-Man reboot, but again lost the role to Tom Holland. Seems like he's losing to a lot of Brits here. <laughs> For Josh, even though he lost out on the role twice, there's no hard feelings since he got so much success from the Hunger Games franchise. But imagine PETA swinging through trees like Spider-Man instead of burying himself in the mud like a weirdo. Coming in at number 8, Eddie Redmayne. Eddie Redmayne is one of Hollywood's most talented actors. I love every film this guy's in because he's just so freaking good. But even though he's an amazing actor, most of the time, he's not always the top pick for some casting directors. In an instance where he lost out on a major film role was when he missed out on playing Kylo Ren in Star Wars. At the time of his audition, the character of Kylo Ren was super top secret, so even the people who read for the role had no idea what character they were auditioning for. In an interview, Eddie said that they gave him lines from Pride and Prejudice and asked him to improv being a bad guy. Seems relatively simple, so to speak, but for Eddie, it did not come so naturally. Eddie ended up reading the lines with a bunch of different and crazy voices to get into the evil character they were asking for, and even tried his hand at the famous Darth Vader breathing. But in the end, the casting directors weren't all too impressed with the audition, and Eddie lost the role. At 7, Emily Blunt. Emily Blunt is famous for her roles in films like A Quiet Place, The Devil Wears Prada, and Mary Poppins, but she could have also been famous for playing Black Widow in the MCU. Emily had secured the role as Natasha Romanoff in the Iron Man sequel, but because of scheduling conflicts with her other production, Jack Black's Gulliver's Travels. I mean, why she would want to give up an MCU production for Gulliver's Travels, I will never know, but to each their own, I guess. Emily said in an interview that she had to drop the Black Widow role for her own sanity, since filming two films at the same time would have been very draining on her. But again, I would have chosen the MCU hands down. Either way, Emily's backing out of the production paved the way for Scarlett Johansson to take up the mantle, and I guess it was for the best because honestly, I couldn't imagine anyone else as Black Widow. In at 6, Matt Damon. 
Seems like Matt Damon has lost out on quite a few major roles in the past. He's passed on playing the lead in Daredevil and has even passed on playing Harvey Dent in The Dark Knight. But probably the biggest role that he's missed out on has to be the role of Jake Sully in James Cameron's Avatar. In an interview, the actor revealed that though he thought that the script was great, preparation for his other film, The Bourne Ultimatum, was beginning at the same time as Avatar's, so he chose to back out of that role. It was also revealed that he and Jake Gyllenhaal were both considered for the role, but it ultimately ended up going to Sam Worthington in the end. The film ended up grossing $2.7 billion at the box office, and Matt joked that the film would have been even more successful had he been in it. But you snooze, you lose, I guess. Halfway through at number five, Emma Watson. Another star who lost out on a major role because of conflict issues is Emma Watson. Watson was originally supposed to play Mia in La La Land, but had to back out because of conflicts with her other production, Beauty and the Beast. She shared that for her role as Belle in the live action Disney remake, she had a lot of preparations to do for the role. She had horse training, dance lessons, and voice lessons to do, so her schedule was already pretty packed. And since her role in La La Land was also a musical and would involve singing and dancing, her training would have pretty much been doubled in that same time frame. So I mean, I can fully understand why you would make the decision to drop one of the films. And on top of that, it must not have been a very easy decision. Both films were very successful, but Emma Stone took up the mantle as Mia in La La Land over Watson, and the film landed Stone an Academy Award for Best Actress. Either way, Watson got to star in a musical, and to me, I see this as an absolute win. If you know that meme, I like you. At number four, Michael B. Jordan. You know that question that people sometimes ask at like boozy game nights of like, who would you want to play you in a movie about your life? Well, this question actually came up for real when it came to casting for the film Straight Outta Compton and Dr. Dre requested that Michael B. Jordan play him in the upcoming film. Unfortunately for Dr. Dre, his dream didn't quite come true though. And also quite unfortunately for Michael, he was unavailable for the part because he was filming the Fantastic Four reboot. Now I'm saying unfortunately because that movie was hot garbage and you cannot convince me otherwise. It would have been better for Michael to have been in Straight Out of Compton just to save himself the humiliation of being in the unfortunate four. The NWA biopic was already facing some scrutiny since people thought it was going to fail because of its already small budget, so that's probably why Michael didn't just drop the Fantastic Four since they thought it would do well. But oh boy did they have that the wrong way around. Oh how the tables have turned. Coming in at number three, Matthew McConaughey. It's hard to imagine anyone other than Leonardo DiCaprio as Jack Dawson from Titanic, but it almost happened. Matthew McConaughey actually auditioned for the same role, but obviously lost out on it. In an interview, Matthew said that though he thought he had absolutely nailed his audition and that he was a serious contender for the role, saying, quote, it was one of those auditions where I left and thought I had it, end quote. Apparently, even though he did well at his audition, he said that James Cameron simply liked Leo better. This role was really what made Leo a household name, so imagine if he never got that part. Where would he be? And how would the film have gone differently if Matthew secured the bag instead? Would he have gotten enough room on that door? We may never know. You can tell that I'm really cheesed about that door. In at number two, Will Smith. Keanu Reeves is probably best known for his starring role in The Matrix, but there was a moment in production where Keanu may not have seen his time in the spotlight because the role was going to be given to someone else, and this someone else was Will Smith. Will Smith already had the cool, mysterious guy who wears glasses all the time look down pat because of his time in Men in Black, but fortunately for Keanu, Will Smith backed out of the role. Now, years later, when asked about his regrets about turning down the role, Will says he has no hard feelings about it, saying, quote, I watched Keanu's performance, and very rarely do I say this, but I would have messed it up. At that point, I wasn't smart enough as an actor to let the movie be, end quote. I mean, Will was already so successful, so not taking on the role from The Matrix really didn't stunt his career anyway. Finally, at number one, Selena Gomez. Camp Rock is the film that put Demi Lovato on the map. It's the Disney Channel original movie that put her career into hyperdrive, but that almost didn't happen. Selena Gomez was actually Disney's first choice to play the lead in the film, but because she wasn't ready to take that next step in her career, she turned it down and the part went to Demi instead. Selena was just coming from the rise of Wizards of Waverly Place and was strictly about acting, so she wasn't quite ready to begin her singing career and she would have had to do so in order to play the part in Camp Rock. But can you imagine if Selena had actually gotten that part? I feel like Demi's quirkiness in the role would have been lost to Selena's more badass energy, but who knows.